do nothing. That would be what I would tell them. You know, we don't know. We're the experts. Experts. And we have no idea what the right direction to go in is. We don't know where it's going. We're just experimenting and finding out. And to put any policies in place is runs the risk of crippling everything. Because you have no idea which direction it should go, what the end result should be. Policymakers should sit back, relax, acknowledge that the future is extremely strange and that weird things are going to happen, but you know what? Weird things happen all the time. The world is full of weird things happening, and occasionally, you know, stuff gets in the news about MySpace or Yahoo Chat or whatever it is, but lots of other stuff gets in the news about people crashing their cars into railings and driving off cliffs, drowning in swimming pools. None of this stuff needs more regulation and do nothing. I would like a few things. Um, succinctly, I would like a, a million flowers to bloom. I would like a million incredible things and people to manifest incredible things out there on the network. And secondly, I would like that to translate into a complete change in human society. Um, I'm a believer in um, radical decentralized democracy, so uh, a kind of uh, bottom-up um, anarchistic um, in the sort of historical political sense um, way of people really making decisions at a very base level about what they want to do, how they want to associate, what things they want to do, and then building that up to um, you know, the sort of level at which government decisions are made, but only when those decisions are relevant at that level. So I think it's completely inappropriate, for example, for a federal government to intervene in the affairs of an individual as it concerns their, you know, how they conduct themselves on a day-to-day -day basis and which way they you know, drive down the street or whatnot. This is a, uh, decisions that should be made at the local level should be as localized as possible. That's not been, and I think this era that we're in, in the same way that the era of mass media um, is an anomaly in history. Um, this era of mass government, of large-scale centralist government, is an anomaly that will be blown away. And I think that this, the, the internet makes possible, and computers and the associations they provide, makes possible this very radical form of instantaneous participatory democracy. For a long time, I thought that we might go through a, um, a long, dark tunnel so that people would become um, incredibly in addicted and fall into these virtual worlds and be unable to extract themselves and become, um, you know, they stay at home all the time, the sort of classic Japanese otaku image. You know, they never leave the house. They've got a chemical toilet and they're sat there and, and they eat all the food and they just you know, live on life support. And I... I think that may yet happen, but I'm actually much more optimistic on that front than I have been, because I think that when you look at people who are growing up with more digital technology, I mean, I encountered computers when I was 11, um, and now you've got kids who've been online and using IM and the internet and so on since they, you know, for all their waking lives. Um, and I think there's a fluidity and a familiarity there um, that makes me think that people aren't going to fall off the deep end in quite the way that I was afraid of. Some people will, there's no doubt, and some of them are my best customers. So, um, and I, I have a lot of uh, you know, um, moral um, concerns there and sort of uh, ambiguity about how I feel about my own business. But the, uh, the, my fears are less there. I guess um, you know, there's potential for abuse, and I think probably the thing that I'd be more afraid of um, now is um, the old order and the large corporations and big government and all these you know, established power structures managing to maintain their hold on power. I think this wave is an inser inherently breaks those structures down um, and will lead to a, a more um, equitable society, I believe, by its nature. But these old powers are going to try and hold on to things. And they may do very, very scary things to do that. When, you, when you're a, a brick wall, um, or you know, rather a, a military machine, if you like, a military industrial machine in this case, facing a, a wave coming towards you, you're probably going to start firing your cannons and trying to blow holes in the wave because you don't understand the wave and it's scary and it's going to flood you. Um, I, I'm afraid of that.
um, I think that a lot of the technological pieces are in place for really m the things we've been talking about. I, I don't really see there's a lot of fundamental enabling technologies to come in the in the virtual world space and the internet. I think um, uh, we're we're looking at you know more of the same faster paced and and more fidelity, but not necessarily you know, like goggles or sensory implants at this kind of stage. I think 10 years is a bit, a bit soon, but I do believe, as with many people, that there is going to be a transition um, or a, a, a point of inflection um, in the next um, 100 years, being a little pessimistic on the outside, um, well, pessimistic, a little um, you know, uh, conservative on the outside. I, I, uh, I think that there will be you know, what people like to call the singularity. I think that um, technology is now moving at a pace where there is a likelihood that somewhere between silicon, nanotech, and uh, biotechnology, we're going to see um, essentially machines or other life forms that we have created become more intelligent than we are. Um, and um, I, I think that's terrifying for the human race. Um, and uh, exhilarating for uh, the sort of, if you believe in, you know, um, life in the universe and its, you know, growth and uh, achieving of its great potential, then it's ex exhilarating in that sense. And uh, I just hope I'm a good pet for the superhumans because uh, that's what we're going to be. And some people are going to change themselves. In, I mean, some people are going to, you know, want to try and transform themselves into these superhuman creatures. Um, I'm not terribly interested in that. I'm more interested in, you know, being treated nicely by our new uh, you know, uber uh, superhuman overlords and uh, being fed good food and uh, looked after and uh, you know, making kooky things and uh, amusing myself into my probably infinite old age. I think it's already there. I think I think the the internet and uh, ubiquitous access to it, which is already there. I mean, I, you know, right here, there it is, you know, on my laptop, on this. Um, I think it's already there, and and I mean, I think that is the thing that's going to change society most in the next ten years, without a doubt. No, the mobile thing is important. I mean, it's ubiquity that's important. You know, that you can do it on your phone, but you know, the phones are crap. I mean, this is a crappy little screen, right? I'm much better off with, I much prefer to do my email on a, a laptop, uh, you know, on a proper computer. It's much more comfortable. And, you know, maybe there'll be, you know, big screen devices or even, you know, goggles or even, you know, implants or whatever, probably not in 10 years. But the point is, that's not the important technology. The important technology is the network. You know, we are only on the, at the beginning of discovering the implications for a globally connected, um, participatory, user-created um, medium. Um, I mean, we're just, we're just at the very beginning. Bloom.